Hello, my name is Jake During. I'm Megan During. And welcome to the first edition of Felt Bicycles TV. This is going to be something that we're doing every month. And we're going to be focusing on athlete interviews. We're going to be introducing you to the Felt Bicycles team and also showing you some great product. We're very excited to do the first edition, which is featuring the winner of Leadville 100, Larissa Connors, and her husband, the Felt engineer, Brennan Connors. We're really excited for the first edition of this Felt uh, podcast, and we have Larissa and Brendan Connors. Before getting into Leadville, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into cycling? So um, when I went to college, I was on the triathlon team, and I did all the sports, but then I met Brendan Connors at my friend's graduation party, and to woo me into dating him, he gave me a Frankenstein bike he built up with all the spare parts in his college garage. What a smooth and operator. I didn't realize it was a piece of junk, but I thought it was the greatest thing ever to go ride on the trails. And he took me to Santa Cruz, almost killed me on Braille Trail on my second ride. And then I fell in I love with experience. mountain biking. And how many times did you break up with me on that ride? I broke up with him seven times. Yeah. Sounds about right. I thought he didn't care about my life, but I'm still alive, so yeah. it's all good. And then I got better than him. So oh. how, <laughs> Shots fired. So when did you get married? How long was it after this? We didn't get married for a long time. But so, then Brendan built me a time trial bike. He like cut the fr tubes up and welded them together and it was like the perfect time trial bike. And then we won team time trial at Collegiate Nationals. And then I was like, I can't break up with him. He spent half of his life making this time trial bike. So he that's keeps how he bikes. So I should probably marry guess you got to marry me. Yeah, yeah, that's how he like guilt tripped me into staying around for five years until he finally proposed. Can you tell us about your Leadville experience? Tell us how hard the race was, you know, how much food you had to eat during the race and just all about the race, really. Your emotions Everyone wants throughout to it. Can I back up a little bit and just say that I'm like the luckiest person in the world because I just keep doing these things on accident that end up being really good in the long run. Like in the same month as Leadville, I raced the Telluride 100 on a whim and then I raced the Breck 100 on you a whim. You did it the week before, right? Uh, well, like, well, no, it was like in a four week span I did Telluride, then Breck, one week off, and then Leadville. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I didn't plan on doing any of those races when I left for the summer. It just kind of accidentally happened. And they were way harder than Leadville. So then it was like the best timing because then Leadville felt like a cakewalk and I got to enjoy the experience and not be like totally miserable suffering. Wow. And I got to focus on just like going real hard and drafting off of dudes and having a great time. How good did it feel when you drafted off dudes, then you beat them? Oh, well, that's the no, best I felt in the world. really <laughs> guilty. No, I felt really guilty. because doesn't feel guilty I think it's that. hilarious. No, there was these two SRAM dudes, and I yeah. rode on their wheel for so long on the pavement, and they did such a good job pulling me, and I was looking at their Eagle drivetrains like, oh, I want that, drooling. And then as soon as we got to power line, it goes straight up. I didn't have as easy a gearing as them, so I couldn't go as slow as yeah. them. And then I dropped them so hard, and I didn't see them until, like, 10 minutes after I finished, I was like, oh, hey, SRAM dudes, thanks for the ride. <laughs> I felt really bad, though. <laughs> but what, I, I, so what was the hardest section of that race? Was it the climb? Was it descent? Was it just how long it was in general? Oh, uh, the to last be... four miles when it's like false flat uphill and there's no one behind me. And I was like, why am I going hard? I could just slow down. But then I would turn around and see a blot on the horizon and I'd be like, Crap, what if that's a girl? And then I have to go hard. And then as soon as I recognized it wasn't a girl, I was like, okay, you only have to go hard enough to beat second place. So I'd chill out again. And then I'd see another dot on the Oh, <laughs> what if it's a girl? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that answers your question. <laughs> Great. So, Brendan, were you there giving her bottles, giving her support, giving her extra food? You had a whole yeah. team, right? Kind of. Yeah. It, it was me in the first feed zone. Mm -hmm. We had our friends Taryn and Bill in the second feed zone. And so then, once you turn around, that second feed zone you'll see again, and then she comes back to the first feed okay. zone. So how so, many bottles were you giving her in the feed zone? I mean, I only handed her one bottle each time. Wow. Um, you know, I saw a lot of people actually stop, get off their bikes, yeah. take a whole bunch of water, food, but not her. No. Did you no. wear a pack or was it just <laughs> bottles? I started with a Camelback okay. because at altitude you have to drink more. And mm -hmm. so I thought if I had a tube, I could just sip every five minutes mm -hmm. and that would take care of the hydration. But I, of course, did not drink as much as I was supposed to. And then I threw my Camelback at Brennan because I didn't want to look like a nerd crossing the finish line with the Camelback <laughs> on because I think I was the only person in Gold Corral wearing a Camelback. <laughs> So any crashes, any mechanicals during the race? 
No, it was pretty much a dream race. I got really lucky, and I got really lucky at, at Breck and Telluride, too, at the same situation. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Lucky. Yeah, yeah. Lucky, but really, it's just a good bike. <laughs> Brandon, were you at the finish line when she was done, or were, did I was. you still have to track over? I was at the first aid station, and then once she came through the second time, I jetted back to the finish. So, was this finish more emotional for you and for both of you than any of the other races, or was it kind of well, the same old song and dance, Larissa winning? Yeah, she's done a lot of winning this year, so... <laughs> You kind of get used to it yeah. to a certain extent, but this was more significant because we had the new bike that yeah. she was on this year. So to touch on the yeah. new bike, um, I don't know if anybody noticed, but you were riding the new Felt Edict, mm -hmm. and previously you were on the old Felt Edict. Can you tell us, from your perspective, was it better? Did it pedal better? Did it descend better? Give us a little insight. Well, to be completely honest, I mean, I... this guy designed it, so. I know, but I love the old Edict so much. Like, I thought that was the best bike. And I raced the World Cup in France on it, and I raced Worlds in Novo Mesto on the old Edict last year, and I loved it so much. But then Brennan made the new Edict, and it pedals like a hardtail uphill, which is incredible, and it descends like my decree, which is double incredible. And I think I got tons of time advantage on the other competitors on the downhills yeah. at Leadville. Even though everyone thinks it's a fire road, there's like rocks and stuff, and some of the downhills are actually rough fire road. And I think I opened up the gap on those downhills because the new Edict is such a good descending bike, and it's super efficient. So every time I want to throw down some power, if I'm descending or climbing, every every watt I put into every pedal stroke feels like it just turns into forward motion. There's no there's no lag. Were you locked out sloppy. for most of the climb, or did you just let it stay open? For the whole ride so there's there's um like a rough climb a paved descent a mm -hmm. rough climb a really technical descent then there's pavement so i was locking out and so unlocking the switching. bike okay. all day yeah mm -hmm. and it was amazing having the ability to full lock out go into sprint mode it was like being on a totally rigid bike across the pavement and i think awesome. that made a big difference yeah such awesome. a good bike so good job Brian. So you were a cross country racer and now you're getting into more endurance style racing. Which one do you like more and how are they different? So I like them both for their own merits. Cross country, I think has a lot more prestige. So it was exciting getting all the press and I don't know, TV getting to, coverage. and getting to compare myself to the best cross country racers in the world. There's a lot more hoopla around cross country, mm -hmm. but I really just like riding my bike for hours and hours and hours and hours and doing all the trails and getting all the elevation. And so when Brennan asked me to race Leadville in the new edict and like November of last year, I was like, wait, does this mean my training plan is like a seven hour ride every Saturday? Yes, sign me up for that. <laughs> so going off of seven hour rides, something I struggle with is nutrition. I feel like I always <laughs> Me too. I, I, I don't know why, I just she can't still plan struggles correctly. With it. I will, is there any advice that you can give to me and to anyone else who's watching how you properly fuel yourself? I think so. it's really hard and um, it took me, let's see, four years to mm -hmm. actually understand how to eat properly on the bike. But I used to set a timer on my Garmin that would beep every so often to remind me to drink. So like every, <laughs> oh, wow. every five so minutes to make me drink at altitude because you need to hydrate more mm -hmm. and every so often to eat. But also just the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Do you ever, cause something I struggle with is I don't get hungry. Like there's a point where I have to force myself to eat it. Is that just kind of practice? <laughs> just, yeah. just get your belly used to it. No, that's the thing when you have to have the really delicious snacks. Yeah. Cause in endurance racing. You know what I mean, right? Where you're just like, oh, I could, couldn't have another goo. I yeah. couldn't have another whatever. Yeah, and that's the thing with endurance racing that's really hard. Like my, the biggest mistake I always make is not eating in the last three hours of the race or 30 miles of a 100 mile race, which is mm -hmm. really bad. And then I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna eat because I can just save that food for next time. Mm -hmm. But if you have really delicious food, then you're more motivated to eat it and like sure. mixing it up. So I take like seven different types of nutrition with me. And then every time I eat, I'm eating something different, like blocks and then, and then Cliff Bar and then the baby food one okay. and then a gel and then more blocks. And so it's like all all mixed up. <laughs> I have one more question for Brendan, yeah. and it's about the edict and about any bike you design. You obviously have access to a pro athlete, and you also have ac access to Nicola and all our other athletes. Mm -hmm. um, how much does that help you when you're designing your bikes? Is, do you get a lot of feedback from them on, okay, this could be stiffer, this could feel different? So, uh, from her, it's mostly just a morale boost. Yeah. The other athletes, <laughs> I am able to get, yeah. like... Real feedback from them. <laughs> Real Thanks! Feedback. Thanks! <laughs> <laughs> no, but 
there's there's been some some useful information I've gotten from you in the past. Well, you're, from the other athletes, are you utilizing them a lot? And like, does it make a big difference when you're redesigning your your bikes? Absolutely. I mean, so for for example, I mean, she's been a huge proponent of one by drive trains. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. really helped me mm -hmm. in, in, in that To influence. make sure you design it around that. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're out of time. So thank you so much for coming on the show. We had such a good time with you. And thank you for watching. We'll see right you next on. time. Thanks High for fives. having us. Woo! Tune in next time. High five, team. What about me? Okay. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs>